slightly earlier than I anticipated, not flustered at all. Um, lovely to be here. The first poem I'm going to read comes from this magnificently illustrated book called Inking Bitterns from the Gert Mackey Press. All the, all the drawings are by Drew Marland. This brownie who's sitting down there has a poem in the collection as well. They're all written about, um, by Bristol poets about wildlife. So the first poem I wrote after a chance encounter one night when I was driving the poet John Terry back to his home in Sea Mills. Driving John home. If we'd set out with intent, licked a finger, held <coughs> tight to tell which way the equinoctial wind was blowing, hunkered under midnight's coats, I took range of those long, preternaturally sensitive snouts. If we'd adopted some disguise, engaged the complicity of trees, my hair dishevelled, snagged on twigs, the cap you'd have donned to stymie moonshine wreathed with ghosts of broken leaves. If we'd watched a warrior tribe creep circumspectly from its scent, rootling for worms and fern, and raking grubs from bark with iron claws, <laughs> that encounter couldn't have been any more extraordinary than our glimpse of badgers, momentarily frozen to the tarmac of Paris Lane, trot into view when I close my eyes, or sick through my dreams. I should not be astounded. Brocks are native to these parts, their pads remember lost, obliterated tracks. Yet in that instant, with hairy serendipity, they were moon-snared muses, excavating poetry. I can find it. Here's the lovely drawing of the badger in the moonlight that you did for the book. Another creature that was sorely persecuted in the past is the red kite. It's such a joy that with our help, they're now making a strong comeback. I understand that they are increasingly seen in the skies over the West Country, although I've only ever spotted them in the Chilterns. Red kites over High Wycombe. I know they're there before I see them. My eyes on the road, the car in front, then snatching at the sky. That russet skull, daubs of white under wing, rippled pinions, those twisting tails. There must be eight, no, wait, a dozen overhead. The first time I saw one swoop as I stood at the window of your room, I thought it an omen. Now I know better, know that they can't be owned or diminished to fit my need. I am a visitor here to move boxes and bags from one impromptu lodging to another, and unfamiliar with this town, the suburbs that these natives surveyed with ferocious intimacy. So when my job's done, I'll travel back home, where red kites are rare and the air trembles at their whistle. The remaining poems will all be in my second poetry collection, Map Reading for Beginners, which is published in the autumn. Another encounter, this time with a Dartmoor adder, who refused to budge from the footpath. What the poem doesn't tell you is that I was walking with my border collie, Ted, at the time, and had to resort to picking him up in my arms and staggering to safety. The poem's title means Fear of Snakes. Ophidiophobia. The snake lay to one side of the trap, grey-brown, with an umber stripe diapering her lax and looping spine, indolent, rabid. I stopped, hesitating, in expectation that she'd unwind and slide off into cracking so high it towered over my head. Instead, she stayed there without moving, playing dead. And I, too, filled with primeval fear, seeping into the roots of my teeth and hair, piercing my heart to its shuddering core. Though now, I also saw a fierce, familiar beauty. An 
alien landscape and blood-stained eyes, the mundane burden of waiting, waiting to give birth. Sidling by, I recognised her, this cold-blooded stranger, hostage of nature, my sister, momentarily sharing the same past. Thank you. 